So last week I uh, took some time off, so hopefully you enjoyed all of the pre-recorded videos, but uh, I'm back now and I've been chomping at the bit to talk about this particular story. I'm not gonna get into all of the details because I'm sure that you have learned about this already, but Ron DeSantis has done a PR stunt that's just really disgusting. And he did this as an attempt to hypocrisy burn Democrats. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is to explore a different element to just kind of put into perspective historically how bad what he did really is. So there were these organizations known as the White People's Councils. They existed all throughout the South and the United States during the segregation era. And they would oftentimes align with members of the Ku Klux Klan to bus Black American citizens to other cities. And the same thing that they said was the same thing that Ron DeSantis is saying now. So they'd say, well, you know, this particular governor, he seems more open and accepting of black people. Therefore, if we ship them to his city, I'm sure that he won't view them as a nuisance as the way that we do. And I'm sure that he'd be happy to house them. So that's what they would say. And we'll get into the specifics here, but take, it the, uh, take a look at the way that Ron DeSantis described these migrants and what his intent was to do. We are not a sanctuary state, and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction and yes, we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures. Biden would fly people in the middle of the night, dump them all across this country. There was no warning on any of this. And all those people in DC and New York were beating their chests when Trump was president, saying they were so proud to be sanctuary jurisdictions, saying how bad it was to have a secure border. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk and they're so upset that this is happening. And it just shows you, you know, their virtue signaling is a fraud, okay? So notice the cruelty when he announced that he'd be trafficking these human beings across state lines. People behind him laughed. I mean, particularly the two white ladies who were behind him, they laughed as if it was a joke to transport human beings across state lines to prove a political point, potentially doing so illegally while um, getting them to agree to go with you under false pretenses. I mean, the whole situation is incredibly grotesque, but as you saw, he made a prediction at the end there. And he said that, you know, well, we'll see if they're as accepting as, you know, in these uh, in these uh, sanctuary cities as they say they are, right? Because they huff and puff, but I would argue that this is virtue signaling. Now, again, this is the same thing that white people's councils said back in the 1960s. And we'll get to that because the parallels here between now and then are just stunningly striking. Now, I'll just say that I've had my criticisms of the Democratic Party and their treatment of immigrants, but on an individual level, he predicted that the people at Martha's Vineyard would be as cruel as he and Republicans are towards these immigrants, but that wasn't actually the case. As Laboy tweeted, Republicans shipped migrants to Martha's Vineyard because they want to cast liberals as out-of-touch hypocrites whose politics are purely aesthetic, but they got owned because even those country club assholes have have a baseline of human decency well above the median Republican. And that is exactly correct. Most people see these immigrants and they view them as other human beings. But Republicans here, by doing this PR stunt, they're essentially tacitly admitting that, well, we don't view them as human beings. And if we do, they're certainly inferior to us as human beings. Therefore, other people will definitely be as cruel to them as we are. But that didn't bear out. Now let's get to the historical example of Alan Gilmore and what was done to him and his family. So Alan Gilmore and his wife with eight children, they were shipped across state lines under false pretenses, much like these immigrants reportedly were as well. And we're not going to read this, but this is an actual clip of the news article from the 60s of this. So you can pause the video and read this if you want to, but let's get into the actual details presented in an op-ed for Common Dreams by Tom Hartman. He writes, in the fall of 1962, to Deputy U.S. Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach supervised a group of U.S. Marshals providing protection to James Meredith as he became the first black person to ever enroll in the University of Mississippi. Five months after Meredith enrolled at UM in the last week of February of 1963, Charles Bennett, president of the White Citizens Council of Shreveport, Louisiana, approached a black father of eight children, Alan Gilmore, telling him he knew of an employment opportunity in Trenton, New Jersey, and would help him get there. Gilmore had 
previously driven a cab and worked in a grocery store and bakery, but had lost his job during the slight economic downturn of 1963. Bennett provided Gilmore with bus tickets for himself, his wife, and their eight children, as well as $75 in spending money and a dozen cans of sardines to snack upon during their two-day journey to Trenton. He also gave Gilmore the address of what he thought was the home of Nicholas Katzenbach, telling him that Katzenbach was the employer in need of and awaiting Gilmore's services. As soon as the Gilmore family was on the bus, the White Citizens Council called a press conference and President Bennett announced that the next day the Gilmore family would show up at Katzenbach's home. It was essentially a PR stunt. And that's just one example, to be clear. White people's councils, they, with their allies in the Ku Klux Klan, they did this to multiple black families, sending them to Katz and Box residents saying, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you'll be as accepting of them as you claim to be, right? So the same thing that happened to these black families in the 60s by the white people's council is the same exact thing that happened with Ron DeSantis and these immigrants. And it's not just immoral and unethical, but it might actually be illegal as well, although that's yet to be seen. But thankfully, Dylan Fernandez, a lawmaker in Massachusetts, is calling for a criminal probe, saying not only is it morally criminal, there are legal implications around fraud, kidnapping, deprivation of liberty, and human trafficking. And there may actually be a case, according to legal experts, if DeSantis did indeed traffic these immigrants across state lines under false pretenses. And the assumption is that, oh, well, they broke the law, so this is their own fault, right? Why are they here in this country? But many of them had already applied for refugee status. So they're trying to actually move here legally. And they're just treating them like criminals and most importantly, treating them as if they're not actually fully developed human beings that, you know, feel the same ambitions, pain, suffering, happiness, and have the same, you know, uh, goals for life as, as we do. And it's just genuinely disgusting. So as we talk about this story in particular, I want people to remember the historical parallels to what happened in the 1960s and what Ron DeSantis is doing right now. And I get that this story is old news, but history oftentimes repeats itself. And there's a lot more context to get to. So I'll link you to the full story written by Tom Hartman down below. But just so you know, overall... This is not a new phenomenon. It is a cruel tactic that has been used in the past by racists to dehumanize people who they view as inferior to them. And this is where we're at still in 2022. You'd think that things like this are a relic of ancient history that we all collectively look back upon and cringe at. But no, in 2022, Republican governors are doing this and people are standing behind them laughing at the cruelty rather than wincing at it, thinking, maybe this isn't the best look, maybe we look bad. But perhaps this is backfiring because when you just, when you cross that line, there are some people who, even if they don't necessarily think that immigration should be a thing that happens, maybe they'll say, oh, well, I support legal immigration, even if in practice they don't. But even for them to see the cruelty like this, it might be too much for them. So there's a potential that this backfires, and I hope that it does. And most importantly, I hope that Ron DeSantis is held legally accountable because human trafficking to make a political point, a racist political point, is pretty gross. And even for 2022 America, we shouldn't tolerate things like this. 